Hello. Welcome to my program on um, automotive selling skills. I'm Bob Sushadri. Today's subject is negotiation. You know, unconsciously we are negotiating all the time. We are repeatedly negotiating, maybe with our milkman or a car salesman or an adamant four-year-old child. Negotiations occur daily in our lives. But a proper sales process forms the main pillar for success in a on a negotiating table. Everyone wishes for a successful negotiation. I mean, that's the reason why we are sitting there, isn't it? That's the reason why we sit there and, and state and, and spend hours on the negotiation table. It could be worthwhile to consider factors that may spell out the success or failure on a negotiation table. If you have done your steps correctly with what I have said, and if you followed my course, my course, with special emphasis on qualifying process, by now you should know why your customer or the organization is buying the vehicle and you should know exactly how the vehicle meets their needs. Research shows customers are not price sensitive when they see a value in a product. However, prospects in the Eastern markets ask for the discount first and then the price. And of course, there are also people who point to a car and ask for the price. We get all kinds. The standard practice is to place a retail selling price on the car. The retail customer market places a fixed price uh, label or next to the maximum retail price in the showrooms. It psychologically deters a customer from negotiating. The Saturn dealership in the United States followed the practice for a while. We'll speak more on the subject later. In the automotive segment, law state that you have to display the retail selling price of the car next to it. And, um, and the the customer is bound to negotiate. So there's been disputes many a time. We've been wondering whether to give the price first or stall, talk about the values, which is the right path. I mean, it's, it's, it's debatable. It depends from market to market and from the customer profile. Um, many a time, it's good to, if the person insists on the price, state the price, but along with that, also state the EMI value. And calculating on the longest tenure, of course. The reactions of the customers will show you uh, how the product is going to be purchased. We could hold on to the retail price so that we can provide an allowance if there is a trade-in involved. If forced into a discount, do so by giving away accessories as a discount instead of cash. Follow through stipulating details in black and white. Always write it down the dash of truth to help to seal the deal in both parties favor it's got to be a win-win situation in any negotiation give priority to mutual respect never concentrate solely on your aim consider how the other party may feel about the outcome concentrate on the details and work your way outwards from the central point of discussion it is relatively easy to detect sincerity or otherwise in a negotiation. As long as you keep this in mind and recognize the other party's sincerity, the negotiations will flow. You may have a set of rules that guide you towards achieving your goals. Change as necessary as long as the modification is practical and does not result in a disadvantage for any of you. It's good to remember that negotiations is not a contest. You're not competing with each other. Yeah. You're rather trying to arrive at a solution which is going to be beneficial for both. It's also not a venue to display your intelligence or your smartness. It ought to be a two-way street. So, as I said earlier, it has to be a win-win situation. We keep our word. Our words must be considered as sacrosanct. Keep an eye out for the customer's reactions as well as you speak. We should address any deviations in advance to eliminate the element of surprise which frequently results in anxiety to the customer. 
maintain as many open and diverse options as, well, as possible. They may prove useful, particularly when a minor difference has become quite uh, apparent. Keep an eye out for physical reactions to the proposals. They may assist you and the other party in agreeing more easily. My last chapter speaks about body language, so we'll talk about that as well. Be an attentive listener. Anticipate the other party's response, but only in your mind. You may be correct, but we, you may also be incorrect. So it's preferable to appear affable than to be sorry later. So, now what are the most important aspects when you are going to going on to a negotiation table, gathering information. This information plays an important role in the negotiation. Arm yourself with the knowledge of con uh, concerning the market, the business environment, and the deal criteria and the subjects for the transaction. Learn as much as possible about their client, their operations, their geographic area of operation, whether they believe that they, they can derive value out of for your products or services, the very reason why they are there, I mean, they must have seen some value in your product or in you, which is why they have come across to, to see you and talk to you. Find out as much as possible about the competitive offerings. At the very least, who are the other competitors that they have been visiting in a casual uh, manner so that you get an idea of who they are uh, competing with. And you should have, and, and possibly if you can even get their quotations, it's ask them how much they quoted for that. But you should be having that information. There's something called the price and comparison strategy, which I'll give you as a hard copy later on, where you keep, where you write down all the um, your competitors' specification vis-a-vis -vis yours, and add and value to each one of those specifications, and you stack them up, and you come down to the bottom line and see how they all. And so if you're if your customer has visited several other uh, competition, he, he would know a lot. And when he looks at that, he could well get surprised when he shows things, uh, your product uh, being in favor. Conduct customer research using organizations' records and those of other organizations, colleagues, external sources. You can find out what the company wants, know more about the company, and everything that you know. And nowadays with the internet, it's a breeze. So you can get as much of information as you want. You know what could be the expected outcome. Yeah, now you've got to you've got to sell, right? I mean that's the bottom line. The idea is to sell that motor car in as sophisticated manner as possible, giving the feeling that you are not there just to sell the object, but you're starting a relationship. It's got to be a, on a very friendly term. Remember, you can always sell easily to a friend. So hopefully by now you would have been addressing him, you would know his name, you'd be addressing with his, to his name and, and you know, being more comfortable with each other after all these days. So what happens if you can't agree? So you have to keep that door open as well. Yeah? Be certain that you have a potential for a better alternative. Keep something in your hand. The more compelling the alternative, the stronger your negotiating position. Now, when the going gets tough, you might reduce the price of the product you are trying to sell. But you'll have to get know to what extent you have to go down. So get the right price, get the bottom line from your superior so that you're going to do that. Um, when you're going through this process, don't jump up and try to run back and forth to your superiors. And that used to be a practice many years ago. But uh, you should be authoritative to state that you're the person who takes the call. And uh, as much as possible, you should be the one who's giving him the final price. And that way you gain respect. Now, hopefully you should have talked to him earlier and have found out that there's enough time. Because nobody can, if, if you're going to start negotiating, he says, look, I've got only five minutes, so tell me what you want to do. You can't close a deal like that. So you have to tell him, look, I suggest you come back with more time in your hands and then take the appointment and take an appointment to say a few other things. No, I want to know the price. That's what the customer will say. I just want to know the bottom line. That's it. I want to get out of here. Now you know that he's out there trying to get prices from, from every person. So then there are other ways. They say, that, look, 
we just don't sell motor cars. We also take you and show, show you our showrooms. Let me show you our premises. Let me show you our, our, our workshop area. Any person who's serious about buying a motor car will want to see your after sales service. Will want to see the premises. Use that time to take out and you can then, when you say that, you can suss out how serious the customer is. And, and for all you know, when you approach it in this manner, he might be appreciative and will drift towards you vis-a-vis -vis the competition. Now, there are determined which is the most helpful alternative. I mean, what happens if you cannot agree? Do you still have another day? which is preferable, you know, to secure a, a solution. So if that must be the case, then all right, let the person walk, but make sure that you take some sort of a down payment. And if you don't get anything from him, well, there's something that's gone wrong in the process that you have been following. So perhaps you did not judge the intensity of the deal. Perhaps you did not judge the urgency of the deal. So think through that when you come to this position. All this is done on your feet. And while talking to your customer, you should be able to suss this out. And this is a kind of, and you can do that only if you develop a friendly relationship with the customer. Now, if you've got a team, you must make sure that you will have to educate the team not to speak out of turn but they must be ready to take the notes and do whatever that, that needs to be done and to summarize as well. Now, once you've prepared well, it's showtime. Rest well the night before, preferably without um, uh, much of entertainment, to put it lightly. Um, clear head is what you need on a ne negotiating table. Go to sleep knowing that you're going to have a successful meeting and you'll wake up with a positive feeling that you're going to sell a motor car or sell whatever that you're going to sell that day uh, or negotiate and do the deal that you've been looking forward to doing it for all the while. The best location for negotiation is your own office or at a neutral location. However, if you're selling, you'll find yourself in the customer's choice of place or unless you induce the customer to come and see the product and, you know, and you know, once again and do it that way, whatever. Either way, it's all right. But familiarize yourself with the meeting location. If you have to go elsewhere, but make sure that you've scouted out, you know exactly where to go. You arrive there 15 minutes early, be on time, you know, and begin by smiling and, and using uh, and, and greeting and talking about everything else other than the deal and generally create the atmosphere of, of, of friendliness all around you. Dress impeccably. I mean, that's one of the most important things. Any client, I mean, anybody who's going to buy anything from you is going to have a look at how you dress as well. And how, whether your shoes are clean, or whether you're well-groomed, is your clothes tidy. These are a few important criteria that one needs to look at. Introduce yourself and your team. Describe the respective, you know, job positions and in the organization. And you don't want them to enter with any kind of ambiguity or something. Discuss casual topics, I say, and take your time. Take your time with your figures. Don't just get into the bottom line. Pose your questions and find out what exactly. Get the whole basket, the whole plan is, is what is it that they're going to. And profile, then they go forward. If you're selling, await their initial offer. If their offer is ridiculous, simply restate it and begin again. Explain why. Why you're pricing it the way you're pricing it. Use open-ended questions. I mean, like, what, when, you know, questions that will induce that person to talk to you, will open up and, and, and say things that will help you to proceed with the, with the negotiation information. Those you can do with open-ended questions. You can also use closed-ended questions, but close end, uh, the closed questions are where you get a one-word answer. Are you going to buy the car today? Yes or no? He has to say yes or no. He won't explain much further unless he wants to. Now, an open-ended question would be something, you know, what are the aspects of the car that you didn't like in your old car and that you're looking forward in your new car? So, when you talk like that, then what happens is that person opens up and he starts thinking 
and he says that, yeah, all right, um, what's it that I didn't much care about my old car. Remember, they all like their own car. And this helped me a lot, actually. I used to clearly ask, look, what is it that you're looking for specifically? What is it that you didn't have in your old car that you'd like to have in your new car? Or if it's your first time buy, what is it that you most appreciate? What is the feature that you'd appreciate most? And that would, that would take you to the right place. Ask questions. Get clarity as much you, as you can, you know. And if you're and, and wait, wait for the counter offer as well. I mean, if they, they'll always have to say, you know, the, the, the move from bargaining to a collaborative problem solving, you know, that's always better and that's always better. And then emotionally detach yourself from the bargaining table. Do not show your desperation to sell or to win the transaction. And in case you could not conclude the deal, be smart in closing the meeting, giving yourself room to get back onto the table again. Instead of a closure like, so I hope to hear from you sometime, it should be to summarize you mentioned point A, B and C in our meeting, which leads me to believe that with product X, Y, Z uh, would be the right fit, keeping mind of your needs. I would be happy to liaise with you or a member of your team to take to discuss this product and service and we can prove and amend the proposal or offer with your uh, unique needs in mind. So which is the day that you're going to meet? What's the time? It's all about rapport building, remember. And that's what sells. You exchange energy for a free in, in a meeting. That's the beauty of it. The goods have a cost attached, but the energy in a meeting is free. That's what needs to be worked on and with finesse to make the magic happen. The magic of a sale. That's what happens then. My best deal was at a client's location. It was, it was a police headquarters with the chief of police and his entire team. It took several weeks to prepare and the, the sweet taste of the finished product lingers to, the, to this day. I sold 300 units at, that, at one particular point. So, having sold premium cars all my life, my research shows that the key factor in most negotiations is the value for money and not the price. I believe this holds true for all products. Ensure that the customer sees value in your product that outweighs the price. That's the way you proceed on to a negotiation. That's all for today. I'll catch up with you in my next lesson. Bye for now.